Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns. Welcome to video three for the Bellflower backpack. This will probably be the longest video in the series. Um, we have a lot of assembling to do before we complete our exterior of our bag. Um, what you'll need for this video is your flap, uh, whatever is assembled so far, plus your turn lock, your two exterior gusset pieces, your remaining exterior top panel and exterior lower panel, your foam interfacing, all of your strap parts, uh, the, um, the two adjustable straps pieces and the rectangle uh, ring straps. You won't need your handle just yet. Um, and then in terms of uh, additional hardware, you'll need the two one inch rectangle slides and the two one inch rectangle rings. So what we will do, we're going to um, change a little bit the order of the steps in the pattern. Um, and we're going to first put the gusset together and then we're going to complete the, uh, the assembly of the flap. So putting your gusset together is really quite simple. So remember we trimmed away the seam allowance at one shorter end of the foam interfacing. So we're just going to put the gusset pieces right sides together and clip these together. And then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew these together making sure to backstitch. And then because it's cork I can't press the seam allowance open so I'm actually just going to uh, uh, open it spread it open and top stitch along both sides of the seam uh, with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. My gusset pieces are now sewn together and uh, I opened up the seam allowance and top stitch along both sides of the seam. Uh, the good thing about this uh, this middle seam also is that it's it's already marking the center of our gusset for when we're assembling the gusset to our exterior panels. So we can set this aside for now. And we're going to continue by installing our turn lock. So you will need the two little screws that came with it, the front plate and the back plate. And what you will do is take your back plate because the back plate has uh, the marks for the two screws as well as the center opening. And I just place that. Do you remember earlier we uh, made a mark for our the location of our turn lock? So I'm just going to center that mark in the middle of the larger hole in the center here of my back plate. And yes, I'm just using a regular old pencil because I find uh, if I make a mistake, I can just erase the pencil marks pretty easily. Okay, so I'm actually marking the, the all three holes, the larger center hole and then the screw holes on either side. Okay, so now I have to punch out these holes the screw holes it's easy what i'm going to do is just use my uh my regular hole punch uh, that i use to make holes for rivets however the larger center hole i'm going to use i have i bought a set of punches and i i, I believe i've shown this actually in another video so it's just like a, a set of punches i got them i think on ebay or or amazon i can't remember and uh, there's one that's actually the exact same size and shape as the center hole on this back plate. So I'm actually going to pause the video and restart it so that I can remove the sound from the, the next clip. I don't want anyone to listen to, to me hammering with this punch. So I'm going to pause the video and restart it and punch out all three holes and then I'll, I'll, I'll restart the, the video once that's done.
Okay, so the center hole is punched out as well as the two holes at either side for my screws. And what I've done as well uh, before I continue is I always take, I take my front plate and I just make sure that uh, the holes are big enough and they're in the right position and that looks really good. So then what I'll do, because I used fabric, I want to make sure that I use a lot of fray check where I've cut so that the fabric doesn't fray. I'm gonna actually put that on both sides. And then from the front, I place my front plate. Now you should be putting glue um, on your front plate and your back plate. I'm actually just going to put it in the, the screw holes for the video because um, I'm trying to make this go by a little bit faster. So I'm going to get my glue. I just use uh, E6000 and I just put a drop in each of the screw holes. You could also use uh, Loctite, which is actually, it's, a, it's actually made to glue metal parts together. And my glue is not coming out. Isn't it always the way when you're filming something, that's when things stop working properly? Okay, there we go. Okay, and I am gonna put just a tiny bit of glue here. sure not to get it in the hole okay and then place my back plate over top and find my teeny turner Okay, so I'm going to set this aside because um, I want the glue to dry properly before I do anything else. We still have to pinch the flap and sew that, but I really would like my, my lock to, to dry first before I touch it anymore. So I'm going to set this aside. And the next part we're going to do is sew up our adjustable our adjustable straps. So I'm going to get my pieces ready and then um, I'll show you how to sew up your straps. So we're going to start by sewing up our rectangle ring straps. Turn them around so they're wrong side facing up and draw a line down the center on the wrong side. Now if you're using fabric for these straps you're going to go over to your ironing board and you're going to press in both halves, wrong sides together, towards that center line and you're going to press these, this in place. Since I'm using cork, I'm actually going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew and fold at the same time. And then I'm going to do this along both sides. So I'm going to go and sew this and then I'll, and I'll be right back to show you the next step. So both of the rectangle uh, ring straps are sewn now. I don't know if you can see. So I just folded both halves and then I sewed along uh, both sides of the, the center line with about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to pass, sorry, you're going to pass the, the strap piece through the, one of the rings and then you just fold it in half and you want those raw edges at the center, you want those to be hidden in between. And I'm just going to use some clips to hold these in place. 
and then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm just going, going to sew up one side through all the layers with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew as close as I can to my rectangle ring, sew across and then go down the other side. And I'm going to do that for both of them. Okay, so I'm going to go sew these and then I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, so the two rectangle straps are now uh, sewn. They're ready to use. And if you're following the pattern and you're making fabric straps, uh, the way that you'll sew these straps is to, well, you're using fabric, so you're going to be pressing. But you're going to start by folding in one shorter end towards the wrong side. You can fold it in maybe half an inch and you're going to press that in place and then you're going to fold it in half press it along the entire length and then open up that crease we'll open it up so that you can see the crease in the middle that you use that when you pressed it it creates a crease in the middle and then you're going to fold both halves in towards that center crease and you're going to press it in place again and then fold it in half again, press, and then sew all the way around with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, obviously, using cork, that is way too thick. Um, not many machines would be able to sew through all these layers. So we're going to actually do this much differently. So I'm going to start by cutting the four inch strips into two inch strips. And I love my clear ruler for this. I think this is supposed to be a quilting ruler, but it's really amazing for straps. I use it all, every day. So I'm just going to cut this so that I end up with two two inch strap, two inch wide strap pieces. Sorry, I know this is kind of boring to watch, but I want to walk everyone through the entire process. I'm only going to show you how to do the one strap and then you can repeat all of these steps for the second one. Okay. Then, for each of these two inch pieces, I want you to draw a line down the center. On the wrong side, of course, not on the right side. And then we're going to join these pieces end to end, but we're not going to use a straight seam. We're actually going to attach them diagonally. So place one of the strap ends like this, right side facing up. Then take the second piece and you're going to place it like this so that they are right sides together and then take your ruler and draw a diagonal. I'm gonna actually clip it just here so they don't move. And then draw a diagonal line. So this, from this, the cor top corner here of the bottom strap piece, all the way to this bottom corner of the, uh, the top strap piece. So you're just drawing a diagonal line. And now the reason why I'm going to sew them together on a diagonal is because it makes it less bulky. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my machine. I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to make sure I backstitch at the beginning and the end, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so the ends are sewn together. If you see, if you open it up, that's what it looks like. It's just like a diagonal seam. I'm going to 
trim away some of the seam allowance. I'm going to leave a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to go back to my machine and I'm actually going to open up this seam and I'll top stitch uh, on both sides of the seam with uh, one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the seam allowance has been sewn open. I've top stitched along both sides. Now this part is a bit long and, and not as much fun, but you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to do exactly as you did with your rectangle ring straps and you're going to fold in each half towards the center, wrong sides together, and you're going to sew it in place along uh, along the both sides, about one eighth of an inch seam allowance from the center line. And you're going to do that for the entire length of this strap piece. And then I'll show you how to attach it to the rectangle slide. Alright, the strap is sewn, so you have both sides folded in towards the center and then I've sewn them in place with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now you're going to take one of your rectangle slides and you're going to pass one end of the strap through the slide. Okay, and you want to have it doubled up, so like folded in half but not exactly folded in half because I have that diagonal seam directly at the center of the strap. I don't want that right at uh, the middle bar of the slide. I want it slightly off. So if you look here, there's my middle bar here and I have the diagonal seam just slightly away from that middle bar of the slide. And then I have the the raw edges. They're encased in the middle, so they're hidden inside. You can't see them. And then you're going to take some clips and you're going to clip the entire length uh, together with the raw edges in the middle. And you'll see there's going to be a little piece of one end that's extra. Uh, we're just going to trim that away uh, when we're done. So you're going to sew, um, clip the entire length and then you're going to sew, sew this together. You're going to start at the end here with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance from the edge. Go all the way up to the rectangle slide, sew across and then sew all the way along the other side. Now the benefit of making your strap this way, as you can see, is that you have only two layers of cork wrapped around your rectangle slide because to make the strap adjustable, we have to bring this back through. And now it's a lot less of a tight fit. If you had four layers of cork and then you're trying to pass a strap that's also four layers, it, it, your chances are it just it won't work, your rectangle slide uh, the, the opening will be too small. Um, so that's one of the benefits of doing it this way. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to finish clipping my strap. I'm going to take it over to my machine. I'm going to sew it all the way around. And then um, I'll show you how to complete the, the adjustable strap by attaching it to the rectangle ring and then passing it through. All right, so the strap is sewn now. I'm just going to trim that bit that I mentioned uh, previously. A little bit extra. Okay, so now this part is complete and what I'm going to do is take the end that doesn't have the rectangle side and I'm going to pass it through the rectangle ring of one of my rectangle ring straps and then I'm going to pass that same end back through my rectangle slide and there's one of my adjustable straps uh, finished. So you're going to have to follow exactly the same steps and create the second adjustable strap. Now before um, I continue, I'm actually going to get the flap and we're going to finish the flap assembly so that we can attach it to our exterior uh, top and lower panels. All right, so here's my flap. 
and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this top straight edge and I'm going to measure three and one quarter inches down from this top edge and I will measure that along both of these uh, these outer edges so and I'm just going to make a very faint line I use a, a regular pencil because I can erase it I don't like to risk with fabric pens on cork especially not on the right side okay so I have a mark at both ends here and then all you're going to do and actually if you feel through your flap you can see that's where the bottom edge of your Peltex piece is you're just going to fold the flap at that line and clip that in place so I start with the marks that I made first fold there and then I'll just I'll clip the rest okay and then I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to sew through all of these layers but I'm going to sew right here as like I'm going to do another line of top stitching by the seam but I'm going to do it on this side the, the side where I have the cork I'm just going to sew all the way across make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end and you're sewing through all of these layers at once so I'm going to go ahead and sew that now I've folded the I've sorry I've sewn the fold and the flap now and the next step is to install the screw together grommets the oblong grommets in this top edge of your flap. Uh, the reason why I do it now instead of uh, when the bag is almost complete is because if you make a mistake with your flap it's less uh, heartbreaking to redo it um, at this stage as opposed to when your bag is finished and you're, you're trying to install it in a completed bag. So I already have a video that shows how to install these oblong grommets and the uh, the video is called Screw Together Grommet Tutorial, and it's also on my YouTube channel. So I'm not going to repeat that, uh, the installation of these. Um, the only thing I'm going to explain is that um, you need to install these one inch from the outer edges. So make sure you measure properly. So you want one inch of space on either side of these. And just make sure that they're they're centered uh, vertically and I'll pause uh, this uh, here at this point so that you can refer to that video and install your your grommets and then you can come back and unpause this video and then we'll continue the assembly all right I've installed the um, the oblong grommets at the uh, the top folded edge of my flap uh, now you're going to take your remaining exterior top panel piece and you're going to place your flap with the bottom raw straight edge and you're going to line it up with the bottom edge of your exterior top panel and you're going to make sure that it is centered just going to measure to make sure I have it in the center. Slightly over, like so. And then I'm going to clip this in place and then I'm just going to baste it in place along this bottom edge here. Okay, so these two pieces are now basted together. You're going to take your adjustable straps and take the uh, the end that um, just the raw end, I guess, of the strap, and you're going to place it um, along the bottom edge here of your flap, and also the bottom edge of this exterior top panel, and you want the the strap. Um, so you're kind of looking at the underside of the strap. So you're looking at the underside of where the rectangle side is. You're looking at the, the underside. And leave the strap 
uh, sticking out past the bottom edge about a quarter inch and you want it to be placed a quarter inch from the edge of the flap here. So I'm just going to measure, yes that's right. And I'm just going to clip this in place. Okay, and then you'll uh, you'll do the same with the other strap. You'll clip it over here, so and you want it wrong side facing up. I'm just going to trim some of my threads here, and then again, you're just going to uh, baste everything in place along the bottom edge. All right, like so. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and baste everything together. Okay, so these are all basted together. Now you're going to take your remaining exterior lower panel and place it right side facing up. Just going to clear my space here. And then you're going to place this along the top. So you're looking at the lining side of your flap here and the wrong side of the exterior lower panel. And just make sure that you're lining up these edges together at the top. Make sure your exterior lower panel is centered. And clip all the layers together. And this time you're going to actually sew them together. You're not going to baste, you're going to actually sew them together. Okay, so I'm going to go sew these together now. Okay, so everything is sewn together at the, at the top here. I actually uh, sewed this seam twice because I want it to be uh, really strong. Now you're going to take everything and flip it upwards, like so. Okay. And then you can go over to your ironing board and press the seam allowance downwards. So I want everything here in the seam allowance to be facing down towards the bottom of your bag. Okay, so I'm gonna go over and I'm going to just make sure I press this nice and flat. All right, so I've pressed the seam allowance here along the bottom and I'm press I pressed it facing downwards. Now, I do want a top stitch here, but I don't want a top stitch just yet because I actually want to take advantage of uh, this opportunity to uh, sew down this exterior panel to the foam interfacing as much as possible um, to give the, the bag uh, more strength here where the straps are attached. If I were to just top stitch here and then base this panel to the foam, uh, the, the straps would pull out, but by sewing, um, by doing the top stitching through all the layers, including the foam, um, it's going to make my straps a lot more sturdy and uh, able to uh, carry a heavier load inside the bag. So what I'm actually going to do first is I'm going to clip this to my foam interfacing and then I'm going to go over to my zigzag machine and I'm going to base the foam to this back panel uh, with a zigzag stitch. And then once I have it basted to the foam, then I'm going to top stitch that seam allowance and I'm going to do two lines of top stitching, one at 1 8th of an inch seam allowance and then another one at 3 8 of an inch or a quarter inch, whatever whatever you, you prefer. And then that way there, uh, remember we, we left a quarter inch of our strap sticking uh, down. Well, all the bottom edge of those straps will also um, be sewn into those lines of top stitching. So, okay, so I'm going to flip this over and then I'm gonna go over to my machine and do the zigzag base stitching and then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch my two lines of top stitching in this seam allowance. 
All right, I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, I have my two lines of top stitching and I made sure that they both went through the bottom uh, piece of the, the strap here. Let's see from the back, you can see I have, I don't know if you can see this. Sorry, I just adjusted the light there, but you should be able to see uh, the two lines of stitching. So now your straps, they're not going anywhere. The last step we need to do to finish the exterior back panel, take your exterior lower panel pattern piece and just place it here and transfer the rectangle ring placement lines to the back here. And then flip this over, see if you can see them through the paper here. Okay. And then all you need to do, make sure your strap is not twisted. So now you should be looking at the top side of your strap. And you're going to place your rectangle, string here, rectangle ring strap here. Again, just make sure that it's sticking out a tiny bit past the edge. And clip it in place. Now get it to follow the curve, so it's going to be slightly angled um, inwards. And then go over to your machine and start from the bottom corner here, and sew up, across, and down. So you try to follow your original line of stitching. And then do the same for the rectangle ring on the second strap. And then your exterior panel will be done. Sorry, your exterior back panel will be done. Okay, so we've nearly completed um, the exterior <coughs> assembly of our bag. The last thing we need to do is take of our, our um, exterior panels and I'm just going to use uh, the exterior lower panel back piece. I don't want to fold them in half, so I'm just going to use the, the fold line of my pattern piece to mark my centers. You want to mark them on the wrong side of both panels. Okay. And then I'm just going to line up my centers. I'm going to fix my So you just mat start by matching the centers, curve this around, and clip your top corners together, both sides. Okay, and then I usually clip this way the rest. And then you're going to take this over to your machine and you're going to sew them together and figure out which direction you prefer to sew. So some prefer, I found with my testers, some of them prefer to sew this way. So starting this way and then sewing down this way. So this part of their, their bag is on the bed of their machine and then others uh, prefer to sew it this way. Um, experiment and figure out which way you prefer and sew it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this. Make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end and then repeat exactly the same thing to clip and sew your front panel and then trim your seam allowance and then turn your bag right side out and then we're ready for video four.